Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood physics teacher. You guys know how much I hate just giving you an equation. So what we're going to do today in this video is we are going to talk about the energy derivations. All right, so we're going to talk about our energy equations and where they came from. Okay, so let's talk about our main concepts. Main concept is equal is that work is equal to the change in energy. There we go. I made that, I fixed that R to an N. So work is equal to your change in energy levels. So whenever you do work, you are changing the amount of energy that an object has. So we have to ask ourselves, how do we do work? Well, we do work by applying a force to an object for a given distance. Right? If you just push on a wall, you're not changing its energy level. But if you move the wall, you are changing its energy level. And you're also really strong. Okay? So we're going to use this derivation to figure out our different energy levels. So the first thing we're going to talk about is gravitational potential energy. So let me throw out a different color here. Let's go with blue. All right? So if we go to gravitational potential energy, then the biggest thing is we are taking an object, so like a ball, and we are raising it up to a new height. Okay, so that's our gravitational potential energy. So if you ask yourself, well, what forces are at play here? The force at play is the force of gravity. What distance? Well, that's really the height that you go. All right, so force of gravity times your height, that would be equal to the work. All right. So, if I want to figure out, well, this is my gravitational potential energy, force of gravity can be replaced with mg. And then we have h, and, well, without too much effort, we get the equation for gravitational potential energy. Now, again, this is the definition of change, but that's why we put our eg0 line down there. So we start from a position of 0, we end up at a position of h. So really our change is just whatever our current height is. As long as you include that gravitational potential energy reference line. If you don't include that, well, I, I can't help you. All right, so that's why we always have to do that as our first step. Now, let's talk about kinetic energy. All right, so if something's moving, well, something has to make it move unless it has constant velocity, but then something had to make it move. So let's just focus on these. I'm trying to simplify this. All right. So really, that's just a net force. All right. So you have some sort of net force to make something move that was at rest. And so we'd have net force times a distance. And we know that a net force can be replaced with the mass of an object times the distance. So kinetic energy is maddening. Ah, oh, isn't that funny? <laughs> All right. But we're going to simplify this. So we're going to, like, let's just work in the x plane. So if we make that to Mad Max, see, I love how this goes. It's just that the jokes write themselves, unless you're young and you don't get these jokes. But old people find this funny. So we have this delta x. And if you think back to our kinematics, we had, I'm going to change colors for this, we had a delta x show up in our past. So let's go green. And if you remember, we're going to lean on our old equation, v squared equals v sub naught squared plus 2a delta x. There's that delta x again. So if I rearrange this equation and solve just for delta x, I get a delta x is equal to, you do some subtraction, some division, you get one half, your final velocity squared minus your initial velocity squared. And so now if we take this and we substitute it into here, then we can go continue on with my red, then we get to see what happens. So again, this is our kinetic energy. So we now have and I should be very clear, this is actually our change of kinetic energy because force, all right, we got the change in there. Work is equal to change in energy. So therefore, change in EK is equal to M times one half times V final squared. Why did I put initial? Why did I do that? No one knows. Sorry about that, guys. I'm also going to clean that up a bit. Do, 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 do. 
All right, so our final velocity squared minus our initial velocity squared. And so if I just distribute this one half, something interesting happens. One half m final velocity squared minus one half m initial velocity squared. That's equal to our change in kinetic energy. And as we know from every experience, change is final minus initial. So really, if I just want ek by itself, well, that's just one half mv squared. So if I ever want to know how much kinetic energy an object has at a given point, well, that's one half mv squared. So these are the two main equations. Let's go just highlight it. These are the two main equations that we're going to be using in this unit, along with this idea of work is change in energy and work is force times distance. So we're going to bring all this together. But as you guys know, I need to show you where these equations come from because it's not just magic. We're actually just building on previous ideas. So as always, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. See you in the classroom. Yay!